Red Teams, a group of professionals contracted to conduct a security assessment acting as a known threat group and launching realistic attack simulations. For a Red Team campaign to be successful, there needs to be a plan. In fact, a professional Red Team will have several plans covering different crucial factors of the campaign and its operations. I've already talked about the rules of engagement. The Red Team cannot begin the planning phase until everything in this documentation has been agreed upon between the offensive security team and the client. Like the rules of engagement and operational security, a Red Team's plans are adapted from military concepts. The plans give the leaders of the Red Team operation the opportunity to document the methodologies and operations that will be used, as well as the personnel and resources that are required for the assignment. This is valuable communication documentation that extends from the rules of engagement and allows for clarity of the tasks and objectives and so the client is going to be much happier with the process and how events take place during the simulated attack. Planning, frameworks and methodologies can vary depending on the preferences of the Red Team leaders and the skills of the Red Team members, but usually there is an engagement plan, an operations plan, a missions plan and a resources plan. There may also be a remediation plan. Remediation may be optional and could be left to other security personnel, either those employed by the client or another security organisation is contracted for consultation based on the Red Team organisation's findings. I'll now provide an overview of the engagement documentation. So first is the engagement plan. This clarifies the objectives and how the Red Team will target the client. This will also include a summary of the resources involved. It will also include personnel, any hardware required, and any information from the client. Next part of the documentation is the operations plan. This will include guidelines on the requirements of the Red Team personnel, and it will also include rules for the operation guided by OPSEC practices, operational security. The plan could also include reasons to stop an engagement, perhaps if certain events were to occur during the assignment. An operations plan will also define what knowledge is required that the Red Team members should know about to successfully carry out the assignment. This might be information that needs to be protected, hence OPSEC comes into a Red Team leader's thinking once again. Part of the operations plan will include documentation known as the concept of operations. This will include details such as the client name, the service provider, time frame, objectives and phases of the attack, techniques and procedures to be used, and any other training provided. The mission plan will set out what tools will be used, so for a cyber attack, what tools will be used for phishing or for network reconnaissance, a remote access tool to be deployed, or perhaps there will be a malware program written and used specifically for this engagement. These are just a few examples. This plan will also be based around the kill chain framework, setting out each stages of the attack and the timing of each of the stages. There will also be details of what each of the personnel in the Red Team will be doing at each phase of the attack and when. This plan is all about setting the targets, the objectives and attack executions. The resources plan will include specific dates for phases of the attack, so the dates for reconnaissance, the dates for compromise, the dates for post-exploitation for example. Information that is necessary for the Red Team to carry out the engagement will be included in the plan as well. There may be details on the first stage of the attack. It may have been made clear in the rules of engagement that the attack will start as if the system or network has already been breached. The attack starts at this point. This is usually included in the resource plan and the red team may have been granted access to a specific host IP address on the client's network. And finally, details of the personnel, hardware, hacking tools and any cloud services should be included. The remediation plan, as I mentioned earlier, is optional. The Red Team may provide consultation at the end of the engagement based on the outcomes and findings. This will be a detailed report if included. The Red Team will give guidelines on how the client can remediate any security issues found. I think this overview demonstrates that there can be a lot of documentation included in the Red Team assignment. There is no right or wrong way of writing Red Team plans and Red Team leaders will follow their own methodologies and practices built on experience. And it is also important to note that not all documentation comes in the form of a written report. It might be something that is written and included in an email, for example.